I want to share my learnings from a 25 big blind, blind versus blind, out of position mainly spot. And uh, let's jump right into it. So first you can pause the video here to get an idea of the ranges we start with. This is based off Odin, 25 big blind limps. Important to look at this because some solutions will give you different outputs for the best preflop ranges. Um, so maybe a bit more spread in what in position is raising and that has a big impact on the strategy. So make sure you're acquainted with the starting ranges. Let me share the logics that I derived from our session and looking at a lot of the aggregation reports and different hands. And uh, one of the key things I learned, I call it logic one, is we got to play defense out of position. So when we limp in and big man checks, the equity distribution is roughly 50-50 and there are rarely not advantages. And when there are, it's mostly slim. Which leads to the key thing is on basically every board, we have over 50% check frequency. And the average, I um, didn't calculate it, but um, just bunching the numbers, I would guess that it's roughly between uh, 75 and 80% check on average. So very high frequency of checking. And I wanna share some logics around which hands fall in that category and which hands fall less in that card category. So um, if we look at the bucket from 50% check to 100% check, then there are some uh, clear um, logics that I can derive in terms of which words lead to what equity distribution. And um, one of the key learnings is that high card versus low card, low card boards, um, or specifically three low card boards are mainly purely check somewhere between 80% upwards of checking and a lot of them are um, above 90% check. And high cut boards are a bit more difficult because different factors play into it. So an ace six five board is very different than an ace king deuce board. So um, there's more intricacies there and more differences, but um, high cards in general have a higher tendency to be bet more often. Um, so that's the first correlation. The second correlation is disconnected versus connected. Generally, um, the more disconnected board get bet more often and the connected ones get checked more often um, just because, and I will get to that um, in a little bit, we um, don't really have that much incentive to bet on the connected ones as we don't really fold out that much um, with the min bet, so the bet 33, um, but more to that later. And one uh, other big thing in, in terms of um, the checking aspect is the monotone boards. Those we also check um, just because again, um, big blind has, um, we don't really have an advantage. Big blind has lots of continues and um, we got to play more passive on those. Um, and one other logic I found was around the paired boards. So paired boards um, higher than nines. So nine, nine X um, gets bet more often. Paired boards below the eight. So eight, eight X gets checked more often. And there's one exception where if the kicker, so let's say eight, eight ace, um, if the kicker is the ace, then it gets bet more often. So these were like the key takeaways for me. One interesting thing, um, and that's why I wrote it down there, is if we look at something like King Jack export, so King Jack 4 gets bet quite a lot, King Jack 7 gets bet less, and King Jack 9 gets bet almost none of the time. And I will explain a bit more um, around that in the betting section, but um, just so that you get an idea of how high card connects to disconnection and where there are some drivers around there. So there are some high card boards that are very connected where connection then is the, the stronger driver to be checking more. And um, let's get to the logic two, um, where it's mostly about betting and identifying betting drivers. So first I think it's important to establish kind of the red line where it starts. So we know we gotta play defense um, given the equity distribution. So now let's identify um, when we wanna bet what. So I identified three buckets that I want to be thinking in, a small bet, a big bet, and an over bet. So B33, B66, and B150. It could be simplified to two bets, but I personally really like the logic of these three because I saw some differences and um, I believe there is a different logical approach to the second and the third bucket. Now let's jump into it. The second is going to be more merged big bets. So when we bet 66, um, there's often also where we bet the larger sizings um, and then B150 is more the polar big bet. So that's already um, a, a way of thinking to differentiate those. Now, if we look at B33, um, generally I deduct, we like the sizing when we have a range advantage. Um, so 
Sometimes it's 51%, 52%, 53%. Generally, more likely we are to bet on these type of boards. We are protected in the higher equity spectrum. This is pretty important because it just generally reduces the raising by imposition. There's less equity shifts over time. That's also important. Um, and there's incentive for air to fold out air. And that one, um, I consider one of the biggest drivers. So um, kind of when we're protected, so we can't be pushed off equity, and there's more air versus air, then there's more incentive for the small bet. And mostly because the bet punishes the air part of our opponent the most. So when there's a big air part and we can't be punished back, then uh, that's the main bet to choose. So more high cut driven, more disconnected as there's more air. And um, then the betting frequency for this is um, somewhere between 20 and 45% for boards in this category. So um, the ace, um, Ace King Five board is a board that I would pick as a um, rainbow. Is a, in my opinion a pretty good resemblance of that. Um, two high cards, quite disconnected, and uh, something where we want to punish his uh, ten three, for example, um, and want to bet our four seven. So there's a lot of air versus air in this board. Um, we're quite protected. We have um, a slight Ace X advantage. So air versus air is the battle there. The second bending logic is the 66%. Um, for me, there were two main things that stood out is A, we have an equity advantage in a higher equity spectrum. Um, and that might also just be slight. And B, we mostly keep over time. So there's not big equity shifts. Uh, and um, that is, I, I think, rather simple. It's mostly ace high boards. So um, let's say there's the a 7 4 board. I assume that that is a board um, where the B66 is, we have the ace-x advantage, so we want to push more towards our lin, but also the board isn't crazily shifting, and that's mostly the case for these ace-x boards. So our ace-x stays strong hands, um, and um, there, that's also why I call it merge big bets, is because the, the better our advantage, or also the more equity that is possible for our opponent, the more we introduce these bigger bet sizings. So the ace-10-3 board will be bet different than the ace-5-6. So ace-5-6 is probably the board that we want to push the most towards all in. So there we will introduce more of these bigger sizings and the less equity shifts there are. So the, the ace-9-3 rainbow board there, um, we mostly will use the B-66. So um, that, that was a logic that helped me to understand um, when to look into this bet sizing or think about that. And the third bucket is the B-150. So I kind of merged that from the 100% and 200% bet. And there it's actually more about the polar big bets. So there are a lot of spots where we like these sizing, so 150, 200%, but we don't have um, the, the B33 or B66 that often. And I believe we like this sizing when we have a part of our range that wants to draw to all in. That's A. B, we don't have necessarily a nut disadvantage, and sometimes we do have a nut advantage. So it's really just about no nut disadvantage that plays a big role here. Um, and C, I think that's the most important part, like why this sizing in general is Im important as there are high equity shifts possible. So we have this part of our range that um, wants to draw to all in. We don't have, like we're not suffering in terms of equity in general, like we're not in a big disadvantage. And then there are these high equity shifts possible. So um, what will happen there is we, I, I believe that we have these um, kind of two strategies that are battling where it's like, we could uh, introduce smaller sizings and um, play around that. Um, but I feel that in these scenarios, the the bigger bet sizing, more polarized, and then have a higher checking frequency seems to be beating the, the EV of that strategy. And it's mostly on these medium type of boards. So especially a board like 964, where we do have this part of a lot of 9x, like uh, Jack 9 and Queen 9 and King 9. Um, that wants to draw to all in and our opponent has a lot of equity um, and we don't have this air versus air battle so much. So in this scenario, it's just, okay, we'd be checking a lot, maybe 80, 85% of the time. And then the time we want to bet, we want to go big. And that's um, the B150% for me. So the 4.5 big blinds into three big blind pot. And that happens a lot of these medium boards. Um, the more same equity is possible, the bigger more polar we want to. So when there's a flush draw and a straight draw um, or a flush draw or a straight draw, then we generally want to choose the bigger sizings. So on like the 964 with a flush draw, this is the board where we want to go nuts. It's the B150, it's the B200 that we really like there. If we introduce bigger sizings, there might be even a more polarized approach to drive to bigger sizings. So um, to, to maybe, you know, even, even put it in 
on two streets. So um, very interesting because there's so much middle equity stuff for our opponent that there the equity or the EV of the strategy to push more on the flop seems to be slightly higher. Um, very interesting observation around there. In this category, then it comes down to these 10 to 15% B150 and a very high checking frequency. Really important to mention here, it's not on high card plus flush draw boards and it's not on two high card boards. Um, I, I think it's kind of self-explanatory, self um, just not um, that much equity to push for. Um, board isn't changing enough, but I, I wanted to mention these because might not be that intuitive. I can highly suggest to browse um, the aggregate report from Odin as well. So if we pick out um, a random board, so the, let's say 864, what we will see is, don't really want the small bet. We like to check a lot here since it's a low card board. And um, we do have um, kind of a merge approach to some of the bigger bets and um, let's say the A75 rainbow, for example, um, with a flush draw, we have the equity advantage. So we're checking the 50% and then we use the small bet quite a bit. And then we have some of the um, two third bet as well um, to push some equity as well. So very interesting um, when these different concepts are merging as well. I was like, there's the B33 logic around um, air versus air is fighting. And then there's the bigger bet size also. Um, interesting to see the the 200% um, pot um, being used 4% uh, here. Um, I think that is also around this um, very tiny category of hand in this scenario that just wants to draw all in versus his draws. And I guess that's mostly being attributed to the flush draw and 7-5 combination here. So um, it is a very tricky spot, very hard to simplify. Um, and it will probably not apply to all boards, but these were the best logics I could come up with to um, like get at least a pretty good direction. I've done some tests by just um, seeing how I'm ending up um, with these logics on different boards. I can suggest for you to do the same and, and uh, play this through in your mind. And maybe that's helpful. I hope you guys like that. And uh, yeah, 25 big blinds, limp, out of position, blind versus blind. See you guys soon.